Let's quickly introduce everybody. So my name is Eric Holgis, and I uh, graduated from Duke in 2009 um, and I uh, have been really lucky that this has been my full-time career. I'm a songwriter and uh, Delta Ray is my passion. I'm a singer and I play piano and guitar in the band. Brittany, you want to tell them who you are? Sure. Uh, I am Brittany Holgis uh, and I uh, are we giving our stats? <laughs> yeah, give your stats, like okay. a baseball card. Yes. I, uh, yeah, I graduated UC Berkeley in 2009. <laughs> I studied. What have uh, I started? Uh, yeah, yes, exactly. Sorry. Well, I studied uh, like witchcraft. So uh, I'm the resident witch in the band. And uh, yeah, I uh, am a farmer in another life. And, and then. And we are siblings, if yeah. that isn't obvious. Yeah. Yes. Um, by the way, everybody look up at this camera if you're kind of... No, I'm going to look at the microphone, which yeah, is what I've been know. doing. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more comfortable looking at the microphone. Liz. I'm Eric. Sorry to say who everyone is, but I, I'm Liz. I graduated from Ford M. Lincoln Center in New York. <laughs> this is what we're doing. Okay, okay, okay. You started. I am the worst. Um, and uh, I'm yeah. newly married, and I've been in the band since it started, and I love everyone. Thank you. Ian, right. do you want to tell us who you are? Try to trim down my intro. My name is Ian Holgis, and I graduated from Duke in 07. I'm Grant Emerson. It took me six years to graduate college from <laughs> UNCW, and uh, I'm also taking this time during COVID to learn computer coding, so I'm uh, learning full stack development, and it's really fucking hard. And, <laughs> and experiment with your mustache. And also have a, uh, a nice quarantine mustache. Oh, I hope it's nice. It's oh, nice. well, let me know, let you all weigh in. Let me know in the chat, please. Yeah. And my name is Mike McKee. I graduated not from Duke, and I play percussion <laughs> and lots of other noisy percussiony drum things. So that's me. Yes, and uh, it's Mike and Grant are from North Carolina. Uh, the three siblings grew up uh, actually in the southeast. I was born. Ian and I were born in Durham, um, and then we moved to California, which is where we met Liz. And we've been singing together for over 20 years. Um, and when we graduated from college, uh, we immediately started this band in Durham, North Carolina. We all moved into a house together. And we, uh, our first show was on Duke's campus, actually, at Old Duke, I think, Old Duke Festival. Um, Joe College Day. Was it Joe College Day? Mm -hmm. OK, perfect. Um, Get it right. And then, uh, and then we uh, toured on the weekends to start out. And uh, but what? <laughs> One of the cool connections that we wanted to, before we sing our first song, uh, let everybody know is our manager, our first manager was also a friend of ours from Duke. And he connected us through a fluke relationship that he had with a Duke doctor um, to one of the executive uh, vice presidents at Warner Brothers. And his name is Seymour Stein. We went to his office at the top floor of Rockefeller Center and uh, we actually rode up the elevator with him. He's an old New York guy. He signed Madonna, the Smiths, the Talking Heads, the Ramones. So we were very intimidated being in the elevator with him for the first time. And he says, give me five minutes uh, and I'll bring you in. So he goes to this office. We come in. We have very uncomfortable banter, similar to this, <laughs> for, uh, for about 10 minutes. And he's like, you're going to sing me something. And we go into this song in his office. And it starts a cappella, and after five to ten seconds of singing, he's like, "Stop, stop, stop, stop!" And we think we're getting kicked out of his office, and our career is over. Uh, but he picks the phone up and is on his desk, he tries dialing out, can't get it to work. He gets up, goes over to the door, opens it, and he yells, people "Fall in!" People falling in. Uh, right, exactly. No, he yells out to the office to bring more people, and he's like, "You gotta hear this. It's so beautiful." Wow, this um, New York. Yes. It's, it's, it's pretty right. good. He's from Brooklyn. So uh, this is the song we sang in his office that got us our first record deal with Warner Brothers. This is called Hey, Hey, Hey. One, two, three, four. Hey, 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 don't you want to love me now, baby? Hey, 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 ain't you thinking about me? Even though 
about, uh, you know, my gratitude to Duke as kind of an origin story for the band and me personally is that my parents met at Duke. Uh, our parents met at Duke, sorry. Um, I'm just so used to my solo shows. Wow. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Um, our parents met at Duke and uh, my... <laughs> we are gonna make fun of, we're gonna make fun of him after this. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but, and then, and then uh, and then I was born, and that's all that matters. <laughs> uh, no, but my parents, my parents, our parents met at Duke. I keep doing it. Um, and I, I, when I was growing up, you know, my dad was always a uh, just a pillar of of strength and resilience. Um, what's that? Dad's watching. Oh, 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 big man's arm. The big man's arm. Um, well, I. Uh, he is uh, a pillar of strength and he's also an entrepreneur and you know being a musician is an entrepreneurial pursuit so we learn firsthand what it takes to make a dream become real and um i i, I ian and i wrote this song when we were living in durham uh, largely inspired by our, our dad and the kind of uh mythology that we grew up with uh or having him as a father so uh we want to sing this one for you next this is a song about hope, and uh, it's one of my favorite songs to sing. It's called Morning Comes.
performed at all uh, since quarantine happened um, in March. And we had a whole tour planned around an album that we released uh, in, in March. And uh, um, I am just really excited that we are singing again um, and playing again. And, it's cathartic as uh, fuck. It's cathartic, it's super cathartic. So uh, um, I'm excited you're all here. Thank you for being here. We want to sing, our next song is uh, the most successful song we've written thus far, um, and it is one of the weirdest songs uh, we've ever written, and it's... Uh, I claimed I wasn't going to stand out there. I think you should. I'm going to stand yeah. There's some songs uh, that just aren't look, singing songs. You can't. This is another one of those songs that we wrote in the woods of Durham, North Carolina. It got us to uh, perform on all the late night shows and uh, tour around the world, um, and we want to sing it for you now. This is called Bottom of the River. Hold my hand, oh baby, it's a long way down to the bottom of the river. Hold my hand, oh baby, it's a long way down, way down. If we get sleep, or if we get nothing, the cat's gonna call in the morning, baby. The cover for your daddy's gun. Red sun rises like an early morning. Turn in and 
Yeah, we lost audio. Oh, wait, wait, it just got muted again, I think. One second. Why don't you do that? Oh, we're good now. What? Yeah. What? What? <laughs> Can you hear me? Let's just see if there's an easy fix, and then we'll look for a hard fix. It's in and out. Crap. I think. Oh, wait, it could just be because you're facing the piano when you're whistling. No. No. Maybe. No. Can you be the drumming? It could be the drumming. No. 
Okay, guys, well, forgive us. Um, it's in now, and we will do our best to monitor that. And then if it doesn't work, let's just go ahead and we'll just go off the phone audio, I guess. And just stop All right, let's do this. I think we got the most important uh, <laughs> part of it. <laughs> yeah, 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 totally. Yeah, brings us to Nashville, Tennessee, because um, uh, in the music industry, uh, the label situation, I mean, we, we've had a lot of experience now, it, people leave and they, they come and they go, they get fired. And uh, the people that, you, that we were signed to originally at Warner Brothers weren't there after we released our second album after it all. And we just didn't feel like it was our home anymore. And the music that we were creating uh, was was kind of pulling us somewhere else. So we left Warner Brothers and we actually signed to a label here in Nashville called Big Machine. Um, and uh, that's why we moved here. That's why I moved here. And um, 
uh, we, we put out an EP on Big Machines, uh, or with Big Machine called A Long and Happy Life. And it was inspired by um, Ian's work with an actual Duke, a, a Duke professor and an author named Reynolds Price. Um, and Ian, you wanna say anything about that? Yeah. Well, one of the great gifts that Duke gave me was the opportunity to work uh, as an assistant to Reynolds Price, who was uh, a you know, legendary professor um, and one of my favorite authors. And uh, he was a, a great mentor to me as a teacher. But then um, after I graduated, he uh, asked if I would consider coming on and working as his assistant, which I did, which entailed living at his home uh, in the woods uh, off West Cornwallis Road. Um, and for a, a, a full year, I lived at his home and took care of him. Uh, he had suffered um, a spinal cancer uh, at, at age 50 and left him uh, paraplegic. And so he had a succession of 25 assistants come and um, live and work at his home. And so uh, he left a huge impression on me. Um, he sadly passed away, I believe in 2008. Uh, and- um, or, or 2009. Uh, or 14, I wanna say. Or no, it was shortly, it was shortly after I left. So but I've got the dates slightly wrong. But in any case, shortly after I left the job and uh, I miss him a lot. Um, but this song, uh, his first novel is called A Long and Happy Life. This song took a lot of uh, its inspiration from that, along with some of my other favorite writers, uh, another new grad, William Siren, and Pat Conroy, um, Citadel grad, but uh, still one of the best. Mm. And um, this was also inspired by the other great gift that Duke gave me, the greater gift, was uh, meeting my wife, Rebecca. And um, we've had a long, happy life together. So that was also a big inspiration. Also a Duke grad. She's a Duke, Duke, Duke 20, uh, 2009. Um, oh, 2008. 2008 uh, Duke grad in 2011. <laughs> we didn't, we didn't, uh, we didn't major in that. <laughs> anyway, or this history. is called a long and happy life.
because we have seen so few people in the last nine months, six months, whatever. Uh, but the only people in the room right now are our team, our indie team, which is our uh, production manager, our day to day manager, and our brand manager. And uh, watching them dance and <laughs> clap along and stuff so that you guys can't see behind the camera is really cute. Is there a yeah, you guys see me because I'm still. No. <laughs> Perfect. They're dancing while managing the ish out of this thing. Yeah. And I gotta say too, this is the longest it's ever been not playing music together. Yeah, I mean this feels so good. In I'm over so glad you guys are here to witness this. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Ooh, awesome. Um couldn't agree more. Uh okay, so uh, we just, that's one song off of the EP that we put out with Big Machine. Um, because what happened after we got signed is we we wrote so many songs. Um, Ian and I have been writing music since I was 10 years old and he was 12 and, um... Don't ask what year, just... Yeah, right. Uh, Stop bringing numbers into it. Sure. Young. Something. We were younger. Yes, right. We were younger then. Younger. And, um, uh, we wrote over a hundred songs and we loved so many of them. And I, uh, the thing when you're signed to a label is they really control what, how much you put out. So we, um, we felt stuck and, uh, as a touring band, we had, it had been five years since we had put out an album and we couldn't really change that for us, so for ourselves. So we uh, asked if we could leave Big Machine and um, struck out on our own. And uh, this is about, this is actually last year. This is when, yeah. this is kind of crazy. Last year we left Big Machine and went independent. And uh, at that point we'd been touring for 10 years. So we had built an incredible uh, group of, people there that came to our shows and that we felt very connected to. So we did, uh, we took a big leap of faith and we launched a Kickstarter. They're called fans. They're, they're fans. called people. <laughs> wow. Um, Listeners, uh, fans, diehards. <laughs> uh, and uh, we took a leap of faith and uh, launched a Kickstarter to release two albums, uh, a duality sister set of albums, The Light and The Dark. And our fans blew our minds and made us the most funded independent band in Kickstarter's history. Um, and so uh, we did make the Light Album and we are in the process of making the Dark Album um, and it will be coming out early next year. Um, we're going to tease a song off the Dark, but first we wanted to sing two songs for you off of the Light Album that just came out in March. And uh, this first one, Ian, do you want to say anything about this or you just want to sing it? Just uh, about a, a political coming of age song. It's called Only in America.
Um, so that is on our new album, The Light. This is the first independent uh, album that Delta Ray has ever released. And uh, we want to do one more song off that album, and then we're going to finish with the, the, the next song forthcoming in Delta Ray's story. Um, and then we'll have an encore, I think. And then it sounds like we might have an encore plus some questions. So uh, we're almost done, and we're so grateful you're here. Um, let's if do this next song, here. if we you're hope, still here. We hope you're still here. Uh, <laughs> Let's, uh, does anybody want to say anything about this song, except it's a uh, super fun to play? It's super fun. It's definitely a dance jam. It's definitely not a sitting song. It's not a sitting song. And, um, and uh, this is the first single that we released off of The Light. And The Light is the album that just came out in March. So we hope you like this. This is called Take Me There. <laughs> to that song. It's 
It's really fun. <laughs> dance routines. Um, well, perfect. Uh, we got a dance and um, singing from Liz. So thanks, Liz. Um, as always. Always learning. One of my favorite things. Okay, we have one more song um, for you, and this is going to be the, a song that we release next month. And um, I was excited to do this. I love the Duke community, as you can tell from our story, that it, it has been so important for uh, for some of the milestones that we've had in our personal lives and in the band's uh, life. And um, but it, it was it's been a privilege to have gone. To Duke, it's been a, and it's a privilege to have this community and this network. And um, we wanted to uh, use this opportunity to shine a light on a cause that means a lot to us. And it's actually it's an organization that is based in Durham right now um, called the Poor People's Campaign. And I just wanted to say a few things about it. Uh, we have seen Dr. Reverend William Barber speak a few times. He's the chairman of the Poor People's Campaign. Um, and uh, have been personally inspired and moved by him. This is a campaign that is trying to bring attention to the moral problems in America right now. And uh, we really feel that as a band that tours all over the country, we love this country so much, but there's so much more that we can do to empathize, understand each other and grow. And there are over 140 million Americans right now that are living in poverty in the wealthiest country in the world and that just feels so wrong and it's a moral imperative that we choose a new way and i think that if there's one thing i've learned is that the duke community is one of my favorite and most powerful communities i've ever known so we wanted to bring attention to the poor people's campaign let you know it was started by reverend Mark, martin luther king um and uh and has the torch has been passed and it's been carried and we want to be a part of it as a band of white people uh, this is important that we are very vocal right now about wanting to change this and we do not shut up. So we want you to know that that's our focus right now. All the money that's coming in for tonight's event is going straight to the Poor People's Campaign and we couldn't be more excited to find other ways to work with them and what they're doing. Um, and uh, I'm just glad that, that we got to talk about them a little bit. And uh, this next song that we're going to do it's a song that we actually released five years ago. Um, Brittany, do you want to, would you yeah, mind saying a few? I love it. Yeah, yeah. I, I uh, talk about the song every night before we sing it on stage. And uh, it's, um, it always changes the tone. So I'll, I'll uh, start you with that. And uh, just hope that everybody will go there with me. Uh, but given the reckoning uh, we're experiencing this summer, uh, long overdue, uh, reckoning of uh, how Black people are treated in America and uh, the injustices and violence they face. Uh, we really uh, had the veil lifted in uh, 2014 when we started seeing um, cell phone video footage that was just evidence of violence that has been happening for 400 years uh, on this land. So uh, we wrote this song called All Good People in response to that violence, as well as the uh, massacre at the Emanuel AME Church. And we do feel it's extremely important that we as uh, white people are the ones to speak out and make sure our voices are uh, raised in uh, objection to the violence and uh, oppression that we witness and um, that we benefit from ultimately. And I think that the uh, political climate right now is so polarized and obviously uh, we're in an election year and it feels um, almost apocalyptic in so many ways given the fires and the pandemic and so many other uh, challenges that we are facing. Uh, but one of the things we wanna make sure we do right now is uh, give voice to uh, this cause, to be anti-racist and not just against racism in a um, quiet or subdued way. Uh, this is a song we released a, a rough version of in 2015, but we will be re-releasing it with an added verse and along with a choir that we love out of Oakland, California. It's a uh, 
The song we believe is not about uh, right or left, but about right or wrong and about good and evil. So we called it All Good People. Before um, before we move on, one is that we are having our first ever 
official band live stream, not counting this. We're going to a, a club and we're going to deck it out and put on a full production show. With no no audience. No stools. It's oh yeah, we won't Hold on. Yeah, but it is live streamed and we would be, we would love it if you would join us. Um, this is a teaser. That's going to be the main event. And uh, it's on Sunday, uh, September 20th at 8 p.m. Really 8 p.m. Eastern time. And the way to go to get in is uh, we launched a whole new um, campaign while we can't tour. It's a digital world that we've created on our website. Just go to deltaray.com and buy a key to behind the door. You're going to get access to tons of Delta Ray recordings and cool things and also a free ticket to the live stream. Um, so uh, all you have to do is just get a key to behind the door. It's on our website. We hope to see you there. We can't wait to play all the songs we like. And the other thing I wanted to say is uh, we also have been honored to um, be a voice for musicians and bands. Uh, we're writing a column now for Forbes. Um, so if you will please follow us on social media, we're going to be posting every time that we do a story there and um, bring stories from other bands, other artists and what we're up against in uh, this really changing time that's been catastrophic for our industry, to be honest. But um, I, uh, we're resilient and we're kind of getting through it together and learning from each other. So we'd love to share that with you too. So that's the only things I wanted to plug. And uh, Taina, will you please take over and help? Well, I just want oh. to say one more thing, sorry. Oh. Um, which <laughs> is just that I, I really appreciate all, uh, everybody for being here and uh, for helping us raise money for the Poor People's Campaign. And uh, I do think we should do the encore because I think uh, we're releasing the song "All the People" that we just played for you uh, in just a matter of weeks, and we haven't told anybody that, so you're the first and only folks to know. Uh, but I, I think it's tough to um, leave folks on that note, uh, even though I think it should be top of mind for everybody um, to make sure that they speak out and are registered to vote and go vote on November third. That's going to be a big push that we do in the next month. But uh, I think Tina's suggestion of playing a song about our oh. home state of North Carolina would be really valuable right now and give us a chance to lift our spirits before we launch into some q &As. Yeah, so we will do that. Should we do Q&As before we do that no, song? No, I want, I'm, t I'm too, whew. So I gotta, okay, gotta okay, okay, okay. Yeah, spirit. She's, 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 whew. I'll lift whew. you up. Okay. Wow, wow. Oh, wow, we just had 50 people drop off. Uh, okay. Uh, this you is, we are, yes. I will say we are over time, so if anybody wants to stay amazing. Yes, we have but, to go. Yeah, you have to go. It's, I can. You're yeah, you can leave. See you later. You I have to stay. I'd prefer if you did not. I think it was I'd actually thing. prefer if you did, but that's how I vote. Um, <laughs> this, is, this is a song that I wrote about the great state of North Carolina. It does give a shout out to Duke, so listen for that. And. Um, uh, this is called The Wrong Ocean. On with it. Here we go.
Great question. I think that's been the biggest challenge of Delta Ray in a lot of ways is that we don't fit into a box. You know, Fleetwood Mac is a big model for us because they have don't stop thinking about tomorrow. And then also chain, keep us together. They've got the span. So that's honestly why we're putting out the light in the dark is to capture our stylistic um, duality. duality on two records. And, uh, but I will say that uh, it's only getting more confusing in some ways, but I'm exciting for me because we are also endeavoring on writing our first uh, musical, a Southern Gothic musical, as part of our Kickstarter campaign that we've launched. So that's been very fun. But Ian, do you have any more to add to that? Um, just uh, I think co-writing amongst uh, co-writing, at least for me, with Eric and now increasingly Brittany and Liz are writing more as well. Um, has always felt really natural. I do not love co-writing outside of the band because there is a whole level of etiquette and politeness that uh, I find counter to the honesty that is required for songwriting. So um, it's a long way of saying I don't get, a well, <laughs> can't get along well with others. Um, <laughs> but I, uh, I, I, um, I love writing with this band. And I think that actually the, the, you know, the broad range of influences and music that we love is uh, a big part of what leads us to a really diverse uh, set of musical styles on our records. 
And those are the kind of records I love, so. Yeah, I, I really like it. I like it because it just makes for uh, absolutely no uh, barriers of entry. Like I feel like we just, we say, is this going in this direction? Well, then let's follow that lead. As long as we love it, yeah. Yeah, awesome. great question. All right, and I'm gonna round out the night with this question. Um, since you guys, it's from Madeline. Uh, Madeline, apologies if I'm saying that incorrectly, but since you guys went on your own, Whenever movies or TV want to use your songs, do you have to negotiate your own contracts? Is that something you prepared for, or are there other things you look uh, you took ownership by being on your own label? Oh my God! So Such fun. a great question. Uh, the way we negotiate that contract is we by saying yeah, yes. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> I, you know, so I, yeah. we were actually in the thick of some of those things right now, um, but I. Uh, uh, the nice thing about being independent for the first time as a band is that we own our recordings and we can control when we release things. So that is the master, uh, is the recorded music. And we can license that as we want to now. Um, our labels own the masters on our first few albums. Uh, and then on, pub on the publishing side, which is the, the music and the lyrics, uh, Ian and I actually are assigned to publishers that help negotiate for us. I'm assigned to Warner Chapel, Ian's signed to Cobalt. And uh, Brittany is fully independent. So. <laughs> uh, yes. And um, so uh, we have help with negotiating um, terms on those things. Uh, it's a great technical, cool question. And we can go more into depth, in depth on that stuff too, if you're a songwriter or um, in the industry. That's part of this is like, we want to be here as a resource for other musicians leaving the Duke network and, and going. But a good example of that is that we've actually befriended one of the lead actors on The Walking Dead, uh, who then, you know, after his character uh, was no longer, yeah, okay. he's killed off. Look, spoiler alert. <laughs> uh, but You're Mike, who it was yeah. Well, I'm about to. Tune in to find out. I won't say his character. This is early on in the series, but Michael Cudlitz is the actor, and he uh, recently directed uh, one of The Walking Dead episodes. And he contacted us saying, hey guys, do you have any music in the works that we could put in this episode? So that was something that's happened uh, since we've been independent that's been really cool. Like just those little wins are always, uh, I mean, it's not a little win. And, but it's also, it's it's also it's really like great. awesome to just be able to say yes when right. it's a friend asking, you know, it, it doesn't get tied up in uh, negotiations that are outside of your control. Red tape. So yeah. that's been a really cool development. Yeah, but uh, yeah, no, I mean, just if you're working on a movie, and, or a commercial and you need a yeah. song, let us know. <laughs> also voiceover, actors oh, and actresses, well. we've, got, we'll, we've got them all. Um, and I think we're going to close out on that front. Um, just wanted to say again, thank you to Duke Nashville and Demon and Duke Create for, um, we did record this, so you'll be able to watch it on Demon Live's YouTube page. And um, thank you to all the newcomers who've never heard of Delta Ray. Wow, thank you. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, this is wait. Really can I give one more plug? Come by the door. Yeah. If you haven't heard of us before, come by the door and, and stay in touch or follow us at Delta Ray because uh, me and Taino run the social media, so we will get back to your messages or whatever uh, you want to send us or stay in touch. And uh, if you come behind the door, I'll teach you how to read tarot cards, and Liz will teach you how to cook, and you'll hear uh, the new Southern Gothic musical. So, There's yes, nice please come. come join us. us. Come join us. Love it. Nice to meet you. Thank you all so much. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Be safe. Vote.